Thank you again for your time, Mr. Kogan. And thanks for your patience. Next Thursday we'll have another meeting, by which time I will have some new questions for you. If you remember something new before our next meeting, not just about Jack Boyd, but about your work in the police department as a whole, then just let me know. If you change your work schedule, let me know. If you need to leave Freeburg for some reason, well, you understand. Let me know. <laughs> don't look at me, Mr. Kogan. I don't want to be here any more than you do. If it was up to me, neither one of us Thank would you again, to. Mr. Kogan. You are free to go. Take it easy on these people, Lana. They don't have I'm to... I'm just doing my job, Wilton. It's your job, too, remember? Please invite Miss Emma Weinstein in. Emma Weinstein? Again? <laughs> what is this already, her sixth? Just the fourth. And you're hoping to learn something new? As far as I recall, she just keeps saying the same thing. I will definitely learn something new, Wilton. Even if she keeps saying the same thing. Even the fact that she always repeats all the answers word for word. That's already very important information just by itself. <sighs> well, yes, 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 for you. Because the whole world around you is very important information. Sir, dude. Good morning, Miss Weinstein. I'll ask you some questions, some of them new, others I've already asked you during previous interviews. But I hope that you'll be kind enough to... You can ask me any questions, Miss Thurman. I'll answer you. For the second time, the fifth, the tenth, as long as it takes. You know that. Then let's not waste any time. Oh, what's this? How many years have you been Jack Boyd? Secondary. Secretary. From his first day on duty to his last, I'm sure you can find all the dates in your records. How would you describe the nature of your work? Calls, meetings, schedules, coffee, paperwork, nothing special. No doctor board ever you to do anything illegal. I mean, I'm no lawyer. I don't separate things into legal and illegal. I separate them into honest and dishonest. So Mr. Boyd has asked me to do everything. Has never asked me to do anything dishonest. You know about his school during half a million dollars before he retired. Yeah, that's probably don't see anything to worry about. Jack Boyd is, was always earning money, but only by honest means. I should speak for I should speak for himself. The fact that he didn't have a penny to his name, they almost when they announced his registration. Did you know the case of Jack Boyd may have contacted a representative of Freebirth Criminal Underworld? Yes, but that was part of his job. Sometimes you need to get in touch with one criminal to track down another criminal. I'm sure you know these things better than I do. Have you had any contact with him since he was placed on federal wanted list? That would be illegal. Or like an idiot? Or like a person who wants to go to jail? You think Jack Boyd is guilty of these crimes he has been accused of? No, he's not guilty of anything. He was framed, he was tricked, he's the victim, and that's the whole sad story. You have information that you've visited Jack Boyd's children at least three times in the past six months. Can you say anything in your defense? I defend myself for that. Bring them food. If the court decided to listen to your phone calls and read correspondence during the course of this investigation, how would you feel about it? I don't care. Nothing to hide. If our prosecutor's office has nothing more to do than listen to conversations of a poor woman who spends most of the day taking care of her sick mothers, then please have your phone with our taxes. God will be your judge. Thank you. Oh, of course he didn't. I'm ready for action. Oh, you didn't catch all the criminals without me. <laughs> I like the enthusiasm. Concert was a success. Let me drum so hard that he broke three pairs of six. My cousins yelled and danced, and my wife says she wants the same for her sister. But now, but that'll be in the spring. Meanwhile, completely at your disposal. Let's go catch some bad guys. Finally. 
As I was up late yesterday after the shift and found Donna Freddy hard at work. The poor woman went through the whole station, cleaned her stuff up that hasn't been touched for years. Of course, I helped her lift the heavy stuff. Talked until midnight without stopping. I couldn't take my eyes off her. She's such a beautiful and practical woman. Respects your work. You know how folks normally treat cops around here. They have always dreamed of a woman like this. I've decided that old age wasn't going to stand in my way. I guess sitting my hands on that nice proposed on the spot. Can you imagine going to retire? So I'm going to retire. I want to live out the rest of my days living a quiet family life. No dodging bullets. I won't be idle. She's got her children that will be helping with. So I'll still have plenty to do. I won't be bored with retirement. Oh yeah, I almost forgot all the guys at the station appreciate you trying to make their lives cleaner and more comfortable. Every cop has his own opinion about you and your methods. Your more dedicated employees will, won't refuse to work overtime and will even help with your off the books assignments. You can't expect much of anything from cops who don't like you. Alright. As soon as today's the funeral for Visual Birch 2, I want to go down to the memory of a good cop. And let me go for a couple hours, of course. I mean, I can't really afford to send anybody else out. And here we go. The morning they buried Virgil Butch the third. He was a modest, but it was a modest but really ceremony for those closest to him. Natasha Butch the third. I'll, I'll tell you what you are, Mr. Nash. You're miserable. I go to Virgil Butch the third. Always talked about you. Now he's not going to say another word because he killed him. It was your idiotic order that sent him to his grave. You're know, the one who turned our quiet police station into a stinking morgue. I never thought we'd become a widow so sooner that our family would lose its breadwinner and my son would be left without his father. Oh, I could just grab you by the throat and never let go. Anything about my son, Virgil, always wanted to give him a good education that he could skip. He's going to have to be my college dream, so we'll raise such a scam and we'll never recover. Five thirty four in progress. Oh, hey, I'll send you then. Five thirty in progress. Okay, you don't count for anything. No, I didn't mean to do that. Teacher with a large ruler, Jason the schoolgirl on the corridor screaming. My father gave me those pants for the hole I left to remember him by. The girl's carrying a bag of standing a hedgehog. She sees the she rushes towards him. Cop stopped the teacher with a sharp baton strike and fell down a person in the teacher's chest and jumped quite early. The school girl on their head was no longer any more. The ball got my college, had a decent funeral, and it's for a funeral. My colleague had a decent funeral. Alright, Clemson, Mr. Nash, our teacher's set up with twine on the table on the floor. And I'll ask you guys, no one knows what's in them or who brought them. Suddenly decided to send two bombs at once. So what do you think? Some kind of poison spider? What are they going to do? Ah. More and more junks is piling outside your 
office and you don't find any storage space in the fridge, your storage space start asking you questions. Five forty in progress. All right, you can head out there. Man with a shaved head is strangling a waitress, pushing a serving tray against her throat. Other food trays lying wet on the floor. Cops hit the woman over the head. The tray should let's go. The waitress remarks to the door. All right, well you have the speed. Five thirty complete. Ah. Uh, Much for speed. Strain. Five forty complete. Last one is two actions and one accurate shot. Five thirty in progress. Uh, Five twenty six in progress. Assault and attempted murder. Oh dear. We're going there. An attempted murder. Jeez. I'm gonna send all three of you out there. Fuck. Well, that ain't great. Oh, oh, oh! Ah, oh, he's not back yet. Oh, please get back here before. Please get back here. Please get back here. Oh! Oh my goodness! Wow! Split seconds. Sixteen in progress. <laughs> Did I see in the warehouse? You won't believe it, but the first smoke had all year. It's so really messed up, and I don't remember really well what happened, so it went around away. It seemed like there was a bunch of people in the warehouse. Count about 11. Sorry, I can't be more precise. The detonator is in the room with the forklift. They're going to neutral, they're going to neutral this bomb. It's better to take the brainy guy with knowledge of explosives. Otherwise, there's a chance that the warehouse will turn into a mass grave. We'll have to point out there's a hole in the fence where Pi usually goes through when he's on his way to visit guards. Today wasn't a good visit. Jackie and then were keeping an eye on the night shift parking lot. They had a platform here, but then he asked me to stay around the warehouse. Please don't hurt them. They're good.
All right. Who's the bomber neutralize all suspects before time runs out? Stabby stabby. Uh, here's a question. How do I get over this? Stab too. Stab. Roger. Move on. Roger. Oh, 
Oh, hello there. We have visual. Get on, got poked. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, that, uh, spooked me a little bit, let's just say. Well, in progress. Gonna have to wait for them to get back. money. Ah, whatever. One criminal escaped. It's fine. All right. 
Let's see who's going on tomorrow's shift. You, you. You ask it once. I wasn't so interested in my total shoulders weapons as in the uniforms, the quality of the steam, color patterns, weight, and when I got a little older, I started to design the suit clothes. When I started studying the academy, I made several prototype police uniforms and dreamed that I could wear them in service to get a chance. All I need to do is get to them. I would cause an iron in them. You wouldn't mind, right? Now, oh, yeah, sure, why not? You're coming on. You're coming on. You're coming on. You get your ass in here, and you. And you, why not? Alright, end the day. Do you see him, Pedro? Has he already ordered a drink? What? What chihuahua? Are you sure you're looking at the right guy? Uh, do, do you see a basket of strawberries? Pedro, 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 not everything is important. It doesn't matter how he's dressed. A basket of strawberries. Do you see it? Has has he already started eating the strawberries? Uh, uh, all right, all right, Pedro. Don't worry about that. If he's eating strawberries from a basket, then he's the one we need, no doubt. Just, all right, just wait until he's eaten all the strawberries and then approach him, right? Uh, right, right, Pedro, right, right, right. I'll be waiting for your call. Just stick to the plan, all right? Pedro? It's me. Oh, okay. Jack. Yeah, I was sure you must be dead. Look, Fry, I, I know that I, I... I hear there's a federal agent who's interested in you. He's already reached Millington. From there, I think he'll be uh, heading north. What do you think, Jack? Has he picked up your trail? Fry, let's just talk. Jack, how happy he'll be to find out you're still alive. A, a, a young agent, a, a, let's call him Chris, dreaming of a brilliant career. He wants to prove to his alcoholic father that he's made something of his life. And the girl? Let's call her uh, Tanya. She's recently left him. So he'd just love to play the hero all over the front page and then just rub her nose in it. <laughs> oh, oh, and Chris? Chris has an arrogant colleague, too. Uh, let's call him uh, Tommy, who's oh, always laughing at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 wait. You know what, Jack? I think Tommy's fucking Tanya. I mean, this whole time. <laughs> How could I have missed it? Tommy's fucking Tanya. And worse... The alcoholic father is banging Tanya, too. I mean, they're all oh, fucking fuck. around over there. And and just think about poor old Chris. Fry, let's just... <laughs> oh, 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 and by the way, did I mention that Chris has a, a bit of a stutter? I, naturally, that meant problems at school. Oh, and not just at school, but at the academy, too. Yeah, 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 he was nearly kicked out of the academy twice, even though his marks were brilliant. Imagine, they were ready to kick the guy out just because he stutters a little. <laughs> no, nobody wants to have anything to do with him. You know what that's like, Jack, huh? And suddenly, our stutterer Chris, less than six months at the Bureau, he catches a fugitive off the federal wanted list. And not just anyone, but Jack Boyd, the king of corruption. I mean, the symbol of our whole society's disintegration. Al Capone in a police cap. Nobody else could do it. But there's just something about Chris, you know, Jack? Good Lord, Fry, it's just... Now, Tanya wants to fuck him, and the prom queen Sharon wants to fuck him, and even Susie the ballerina, who turned him down on three separate occasions, because she didn't want to have anything to do with the fucking stutterer. Well, now Susie is showing off her pirouettes in his bedroom. And it's all thanks to you, Jack. All thanks to the fact that you couldn't stick to our simple arrangement and answer the fucking phone when I called. I couldn't pick up the phone because at the moment when you called, the phone was literally being shot at, and then hey, I... You're one lucky bastard, Jack. I mean, you you are lucky that I have what? such a cold, black <laughs> heart, completely here? incapable of compassion, without batting an eyelid. I will leave that poor stutterer Chris with nothing. I'll make a couple of calls, and he'll turn right around on that road he's on to Sharpwood and return to his miserable life of the lonely loser. He's just not the right man for Tanya. I mean, some people just aren't made for each other, you know? <laughs> and true, you'll have to pay me twice as much. Twice? 20000 But I only oh, just... Th th that's not the worst of it, Jack. 
you not only have to pay me twice as much, but you'll have to do it four times as often. 20000 a week. I hope whatever mess you got yourself in, you, you still got all your fingers, or, or at least enough of them to pull out a bank transfer. How long until the next payment, huh? Four days? Uh, come on. Let's talk, oh, like... Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I have another call. I, I'm guessing that Mr. Cervantes just finished eating his strawberries. His what? Strawberries? Listen, Fry, I'm just asking you... Fuck. Well, this doesn't seem to be great.